of Carnal Film Fights. I'm your host, judge, and moderator, Mark Rollins. Today we have Brad. I believe that's what it says on my yeah. on my sheet. Morgan yeah. and Colin with us today on our superhero themed fight. If you look closely, you'll notice I'm wearing my Green Lantern tie because Green Lantern <sighs> is objectively the best. <laughs> Did you say? Yeah, did we you say we something? Didn't know, we didn't know this. Ryan didn't Reynolds. Notice, uh, oh, you didn't know. I appreciate that. it though. F- fun fact: you. We were not allowed to pick uh, Ryan Reynolds' Green Lantern as the best film because we all had it for the same. Exactly. Yeah, I think we won. actually <laughs> had it for all four questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Everybody <laughs> picked Ryan Reynolds' Green Lantern, yeah. and can you blame them? But I'm gonna let our contestants introduce themselves. They're gonna give their name, year, if that's applicable. Uh, major, if that's applicable, <laughs> <laughs> and a fun fact about themselves. So we'll start off with Brad. Fun fact, if that's applicable, but I don't know. It may not be. <laughs> I don't know. I think that's sad. A lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hi, I'm Brad Thompson. <laughs> I should make something up right now. <laughs> Vaughn will put like a thing that says my actual name, but yeah, I'm Brad Thompson. I'm no, not. I'm Stuart Elmore. And I actually graduated in December. And I am working a full-time gig now, so that's what I do. I'm I'm not a college student. I'm an adult. Or whatever. (laughs) Then we'll right on over to Morgan. (laughs) Hello, I'm Morgan Fuller, and I am a senior TCOM student here at Ball State. And fun fact about me is I eat cauliflower with ketchup. Ooh. Do you? <laughs> how did you happen shade. upon this uh, taste sensation? You know, I think it was uh, just on a, you know, on a. Oh, they were just on a plate of food together, and they touched, and then I ate it because why not? It sounds like a romantic love story. It was, to me. It does. you know, ketchup. I got kicked out of uh, the high school like tables, like most of my friends, <gasps> because they thought it was weird. I'm so sorry. Wow. Wow. That's why you okay. got kicked out of the tables. Yeah. One, of, one of many uh, reasons. Yeah. There was a, there was a <laughs> That's the one she's choosing. To <laughs> yeah, there was a list. That was the one that made it onto the press header. Okay. <laughs> Next up, we have Colin. Uh, uh, hi, I'm Colin. Uh, I spent 22 years on this uh, planet. Um, long years. Uh, fun fact, uh, I don't support Burger King. Um, not because it's patriarchal, uh, but... Uh, the Queen uh, of England doesn't approve of it. Um. I'm gonna stop you right there, Colin, to advertise Burger King's new Whopper <laughs> Junior. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I don't, I don't support them <laughs> in any endeavor that they've had. Oh, <laughs> past or present. Good. And there wow. goes our sponsorship deal. <laughs> Thanks, Colin. Yeah. Anywho, so you all know you all know the sh- the shtick here. We have f- one question. It's gonna be ha- have a 60 second intro, a five minute form, and a 30 second conclusion. The intro is where they introduce their topic and what they chose. Five minute form is when they fight each other to reign supreme, and then the cer- 30 second conclusion is to tie it all up. Then I judge them, declare who is best, who is second best, and who is third best. Otherwise Last. known as worst. <laughs> yeah. right. Worst Let's in not, some circles. And language. before I get going, let me remind all our viewers out there to like and retweet our tweets in order to be put in a drawing for a $10 AMC gift card. That's good for $10 at an AMC. It's pretty self explanatory. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, was, how much is it for like. <laughs> What I, I should explain ten dollars <laughs> off of the total, so tax not uh, tax included. Okay. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yes, the, the economist here. Ticket. The government <laughs> will get some of that ten dollars, approximately. Uh, you know. Let's just fast set, forward and like, have our thing. Yeah. Just terms and <laughs> conditions. <laughs> yeah, <useful laughs> on this is not. I, what I don't believe this offer is good for Canada. Uh, um, it's always good for Canada. There no, goes I, I our think... second sponsorship <laughs> deal. Tours in Canada. <laughs> the country. Thanks, Colin. Yeah, but uh, I'm very cheery. Yeah. <laughs> Without much further ado, let's get into today's question. So, as you can see, Colin, yeah. while the protagonist in his own story, yeah, you see where I'm going with it. You see where Some I'm things going. never change. Oh, it's great. Is is is. <laughs> kind of conflicting with me. I wouldn't say Colin is a villain, but he might be a anti-hero. Mm. And speaking of anti-hero, 
who is the best anti-hero? We'll start with Colin's yeah. introduction, go to Morgan, and then Brewert, which is Brad and Stuart. I guess I could yeah. call you Stad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> so, Colin. So, uh, the person I chose to be the uh, best anti-hero um, is probably maybe uh, the most uh, <laughs> identifiable uh, person probably in this uh, category uh, that we're going to be talking about, and that's Wolverine. Uh, Hugh Jackman uh, has made uh, Wolverine into probably one of the most uh, enjoyable on-screen uh, heroes, but he's not really a hero. In fact, he's probably one of the more uh, gruff, tough guys that you'll find on the X Men, and maybe one of the best, uh, being that tough guy persona uh, across many of the uh, movies, not just in the Marvel or DC universe. Uh, and I think this is personified by the fact that uh, in his uh, contract to appear, I forget in which of the movies, but he didn't want to show up in the movie. And in fact, he was not even really an important character, but he's been in all of the X-Men movies and they wanted to at least show him in a brief cameo. Um, and he got to use the word fuck off. Oh, and we <laughs> ran out of time on that note. Oh, the, oh no, the bell the, is the bell's malfunctioning. Broken. No, no <gasps> bell. The bell is just mal oh, Wow. Gosh. They didn't train us for this. The moment yeah. I show up. <laughs> wow. Gosh, it's all downhill. It's all right. We'll go over to Morgan next. Okay. Well, um, for my antihero, I chose uh, Magneto. And especially with the new X Men uh, first class movie coming out and, you know, all the new X Men movies, I feel like he is one of the newer antiheroes that I think is kind of really important to look at because we know Magneto from before being kind of just a villain, but we get to see more of his backstory in his beginning and then even with like the whole Days of Future Past changing everything, he becomes more of the anti-hero where he, you know, he does stuff to like achieve a certain goal and it it's for some greater good, but he does it for like more selfish purposes, which I think makes him like the anti-hero. And um, yeah, that is why I chose Magneto. I'll get more into it in a second. You have 14 seconds left. You know what? Just let me end it right there. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. And okay. then we're going over to Stuart. All right. Well, in the wise words of Rorschach from Zack Snyder's Watchmen, men get arrested, dogs get put down. So um, when I was thinking about this question, um, anti-hero. So pretty much a superhero in general is an anti-hero. And a supervillain is also like an anti-villain in the case because no matter how you phrase it, one person is choosing to go above the law to put justice in their own hands. So in a kind of sense, you can almost make the argument that either every hero is an anti-hero or every hero, there is no such thing as an anti-hero. But that's why I think that we have to take the parts of uh, the protagonist of a story where we are not totally comfortable with like their state of being, their state of purpose in life, that still fulfills the role of a protagonist that we're supposed to be following this person on the journey, but we're just not comfortable with the steps that they take to get there. Rorschach, and I'm gonna explain this during the five minute open forum, is the perfect embodiment of that. And in the example video that we got on the email, he was actually number four on that Watch Mojo um, video, and none of your guys were listed. Oh. Just what I'm saying, that's it. Ding! Ding. I'll make, oh, I I'm taking it upon myself to do the sound effects of the bell now. <laughs> you should just do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yes, we are starting our five minute four. Uh, I, I would just like to say that the only list that I find authoritative from Watch Mojo is the top 10 saddest anime deaths. That's an opinion. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's certainly but, an but, opinion. Uh, uh, <laughs> You're free to believe that. to your point about uh, Rorschach or, or the concept of uh, superheroes being uh, above the law, which makes them in a way an anti-hero. I, that more plays into this notion of vigilantianism that, you know... Which that, is kind of, you know, it's, every it's, hero. It's this immerse, It's different than a sort of like that Have you seen Civil War? Because, like, like, Civil War opens up that whole question, and you kind of can apply it to almost everything. Like, X-Men 2, when they, like, show, like, Stryker shows, like, they literally have a jet under a basketball court. <laughs> like I mean, a flying object that's not registered anywhere. So I, that's just, that was a little point that I, I say, like when you make this argument of anti-hero, it's like when it goes to the superhero genre, it's really hard to like differentiate. I just say, think that when you take this protagonist who we're supposed to be following, who's the person we're least comfortable with sticking along with 
and that's definitely Rorschach. Rorschach, that quote, men get arrested, dogs get put down, was like when he was explaining in an interrogation scene, like when he made that switch to Rorschach. And it was when he uh, was hunting down the serial killer that butchered a little girl, and he made the decision, okay, like, that's it. I'm just completely taking over. And he, like, butchers the killer right there. And he says in the quote, like, I was young then, I let the criminals live. This is a guy that hunts down criminals and just doesn't think of them as human beings. Yet, like, in the very end of the movie Watchmen, we get that clarification as a hero because in the master plan of Adrian, if you guys have to see Watchmen, basically he blows up a bunch of people to save the world, but the Warshak's not okay with it. He makes the quote, never compromise, not even in the face of Armageddon. That's what always has been the difference between us. So that implies that he lives by a code that implies that he does have a purpose to stop evil which makes him the hero, but not a very comfortable one. But I would say that's more of a, a stylistic uh, cho a a choice for, for how we choose to tell this hero story versus Wolverine's kind of... Uh, a hero. Well, he is a hero in the sense of he falls mm -hmm. in this mm -hmm. uh, superhero <laughs> genre, but... What does Wolverine do that makes us uncomfortable to follow him? I, I would say that, I mean, if you've seen uh, some of the, the... There are many interpretations all using the Hugh Jackman True. mode. Uh, I think if we go to the the violence that mostly hasn't been shown as much uh, in the Wolverine because of the ratings that uh, when you have giant blades on your hands, it's never taking anyone in is right. is going to require. Uh, and that I agree same. with that. Like the actions he's doing is still kind of like yeah. pretty heinous. But if you look at the context of what the actions are doing, like X two, I think has the most like brutal like Wolverine yeah. scene that's PG-13 that's when he like kills a bunch of strikers men in the school yeah. but he's doing that to like defend kids and Logan he's it's bloody and he's using his abilities in a bloody manner but he's doing it to defend himself he's not jumping into these circumstances and killing people he's simply fending for his own service but I, but I would feel like even that whole uh, desire, he, even if we look at, say, his, uh, you know, so, sort of that way we see him in some of the other movies where when they try to even get him, he's not really committed so much to that superhero mentality, whereas I would, I would argue that Rorschach is... So he's he, a even, nomad. Even, even, even if we're, we're going we're gonna to go with this idea that we're going to acknowledge Rorschach as, as an anti-hero, uh, we still got to look at his willingness to even commit to it. Wolverine seems to be relatively willing to swing between committed and indifferent right. uh, almost at a, and i agree with that and i, th I think that and that's I'm even going more to interrupt right. you to make sure I, yeah Morgan, sorry, sorry. I, was just, about magneto. I was just gonna say well okay magneto i think if we're going off of like like who's the best anti-hero i'm gonna just throw in the fact that like magneto has been a part of like uh like a larger franchise just like wolverine so i feel like rorschach there like he just doesn't get enough on time like sc like screen time where we get to like see his development as a character as much as the other two so that would be like one reason why i don't think he would be the best anti-hero out of this and i feel like for wolverine i do agree with uh Stuart over here that he is more of the hero i mean he does stuff like he does selfless stuff for other people and he, he like does stuff um to ensure the safety of others which is like technically if I can throw out a point, just one thing before the time runs out. Magneto is a sympathetic villain. Yeah. He has, and I'm, and you know, I uh, love Magneto the character so much mm -hmm. that I might even just argue for like yeah. him in a certain like argument that right. we might do in the future. But <laughs> I think you get <laughs> his backstory, you understand it, and while he's the bad guy, like you just, yeah. you. You well, agree kind of with well, what I'll, he's doing, but the means It's, it's is... sort of how he was presented. He starts off as a villain, and then we sort of see this other side where I think yeah, it's... Yeah, first class where, is a little exactly. bit of that. So but... it, right. I think the issue with Magneto, and I, <laughs> and I was about ready to say something about that, uh, he's more of a... He started off as a villain, and we sort of are now getting the complexity. If he had started off with the complexity and moved Ding. more towards villain, it'd Ding. be a better Ding. anti hero Ding. argument. Ding. Sorry. Sorry for the sound Everyone's spikes Ding. there, Isaac. Ding. I just... <laughs> Isaac's ears are bleeding now, but no, it's fine. Um, was, was that a good ding? Good ding overall? Everybody like, okay, Plus. Thanks. I'm gonna keep, okay. So now we'll go on to our 30 second conclusions. We'll start with Stuart, go Morgan, and then Colin. So just another quote, like going to the scene when Rorschach's in the prison and like a lot of the guys that he's put there. So again, he's against like the bad guys, but to defend himself, he literally takes like a frying pan full of like frying oil and dumps it on a guy and says, none of you seem to understand. I'm not locked in here with you. You're locked in here with me. And like, that just kind of goes to show this guy is something that he's good. Like he has a code, as I pointed out before, but he's very hard to get on his side. Ding. 
I think what makes Magneto the best anti-hero is that he does he is on that verge of like the villain and like the hero in certain movies and throughout like his the whole franchise here. But I think that he is the anti-hero and if you look up like what an anti-hero is and you know with the websites that Nick sent us like a he's could be a classical anti-hero because he's kind of riddled with self-doubt um and he makes decisions like based on his like own self-preservation i think for a while there and a pragmatic anti-hero because he like kills people in order to achieve a higher goal um and then he you know is big on revenge stuff which is Okay. So the first, oh, can you restart that? I didn't even start yet. <laughs> Come on, Paige. All right. So the first thing I would like to say is Magneto was a villain first, and we started to get this anti-hero stuff later, which I feel like is crucial to understanding Magneto. Rorschach has probably the most grounded morals of anyone in here besides maybe Magneto, uh, but that doesn't necessarily make him uh, the perfect anti-hero because it's actually easy once you buy into the morals that he follows. Wolverine is what probably the most iconic of the people in here maybe save Magneto in terms of the of, of the lore, but he really wouldn't be a hero if it wasn't in fact he was roped into all of this. So I think Dang. that understanding his Dang. motives are a lot harder. Dang. I will get forceful smitings. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, I forgot to mention, kudos to Paige over there who's working without a bell. It's like a trapeze artist Good working job. without Good a net. Job, Where's the budget in this? Yeah. 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 Please send money. <laughs> we would have a bigger budget if someone didn't screw up our sponsorship deals, but that's fine. <laughs> it's fine. No. Vaughn over there, checking facts. Any facts to check? No, no, just okay. It's all conjecture, so it's all me. Okay, so. There it is. There, there it is. is. Yeah. You know what that means? It means I'm thinking. Yep. Yeah. I'm gonna give First place to Stuart. Oh, oh, oh. Second place to Morgan. Third place to Colin. Stuart, I think you made excellent points that oh. Rorschach I was really. Oh, you, but oh, it, oh it sorry. It's like I'm sorry. Myself, so. it's cool. Yeah, I think High you made Colin. good points. Oops, <laughs> Can, can sorry. I? Oh. Sorry. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. I was just going to ask, can I get a high? Oh. Oh. Yeah. So, I think you're you told me like, can I talk, please? Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. X, present. <laughs> uh, I think you made a good point, Stuart, that Rorschach really exemplifies um, the kind of un how unconstrained anti-heroes really are and how they do believe they're above the law, and it's their questionable methods to achieve a greater good that ultimately makes them an anti-hero. Um, it's the ends justify the means kind of Machia Machiavellian mentality. Um, and I think you made a good argument. Um, you cited your, your source of Watchmen well. APA, if I'm not mistaken. No. I don't know. I don't I, know. No. Kids, when you graduate from college, it all goes away. So. Yeah. Yeah. Just saying. <laughs> good to know. Yeah. Uh, Morgan, I think you also made a good point I, um, that in Magneto's newer movies, we've seen the complexities and how he's evolved from being a villain to being a anti-hero. Um, but I think part of the problem is that he was established early on as a villain and that he ultimately he is kind of seen as the antithesis to the good Professor X and um, uh, X-Men characters. Um, so that's where I docked you on that. And then Colin, I think you had some good points that Wolverine does some very anti-hero like things, but ultimately it's he, I think Stuart hit you with that. It's rarely him initiating the the questionable behavior it's always his res it's his response to questionable things happening to him can i like point out just yeah. one thing like yeah. none of us picked deadpool or the punisher which yeah. is just like nobody did atrocious. see i thought everyone would pick deadpool so i was like oh, let's go it's only number two ends. but yeah that's kind of my thing too it's like we're all gonna pick uh, deadpool, i think you could hit i think the issue is you could hit that the punisher hasn't up until maybe the most recent tv sh series been really done well yeah yeah so so you don't really have the tv right. series now if you went comics good. yeah punisher would probably be up there but then good again so, you know. good, 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 job, good job yeah so to reiterate <laughs> stewart first place morgan second place colin third place Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Cardinal Film Fights. Remember to like and subscribe on all those social media platforms. <laughs> and to like and retweet our tweet for a chance to win a $10 AMC gift card. Wow. I'm your host, Mark Rollins. Until next time, America.